Okay. This is a guided video. Going to be modeling this Shigley intermediate shaft. It's figure 18.3 from the text. It's on page 952 if you want to follow along. However, let's place it first so we can uh, use it as a reference as we go along. Uh, there's two ways to insert images. Uh, one's a decal, which kind of puts it onto an object. We want a canvas, which puts it onto a plane. Uh, navigate to it. It'll usually point it where you are. Uh, the data panel here for me and insert and put it this time on the ZY. It'll place it. And right now you're thinking, okay, what about the size of it? Say, okay. One thing you can do is right click on this guy and you can calibrate. So it's usually best to pick the longest length you have available. For here we have 11.5 inch. Click once at one end. You can have the pick right here or anywhere on the sketch really. So I'll just put the dimension and it's 11.5 inch. Make it quite big compared to where we are. Uh, but before we do more, let's change our units to inch. Because the drawing's an inch. Uh, I often calibrate twice because sometimes it's very small. Uh, your clicks can be a little off. So once, twice, it's close. And now I want to put it um, near the, I want to place it, see right here, it's not useful. Um, it's up to you uh, where you put the origin uh, in the future, but for now, Let's go ahead here and shift it around. It's a bit fiddly. Uh, strangely, you have to pick the, uh, to move the image and the handle is in the center of the image. So you can kind of lose track of where it is quite easily. Um, keep in mind what we've got here. Try and zoom in a bit. Am I in perspective? Hold on. Um, what we've got here is a way of shifting. What I can do is put it to the very edge if I know a dimension, see that one there. Then I can keep doing this, edit canvas again. It'll reset these guys. I can now just move it up 0.5 inch. That'll put it centered. Then I can drag it to the end. So if I want to put the origin at the end of the shaft, which is quite normal, it's not bad. We can see here it's slightly off kilter. So we can start to adjust this. It'll rotate again, <laughs> annoyingly, around the center of the image. So we can painfully do it all again. Uh, maybe minus one, nope, minus point five. Point four, six, painfully. Uh, if we get this right, we can save some time. Looks like three, maybe even a quarter. We're at, we're at total insanity here. Say so okay to that. Is it close? Uh, let's add it one more time, painfully. So I'm lining up on these center of keys, making sure we're good at the end here. Looks not bad. Say okay. Uh, what you can do is actually make it unselectable thereafter. So now you won't be able to, oh, I just undid that. It's right now unselectable, so I can't select this. Not when I'm doing other things, so this is probably best. There we go. That was a lot of work. Thanks for watching that. <laughs> Should have been easy. No. Let's do a sketch. And we'll do the sketch on the same plane. Uh, we won't be making components here or anything after the shaft. We'll be adding some stuff from time to time to check our answers. The first part, though, just to get the masses down. Let's hide our data panel and have at her. Uh, if we want, sorry, could probably save it here. So save it here and call it just shig 
config 18.3. Shig has an H in it. Let that save and off we go. So we've got the shaft layout here. I'm gonna do a new sketch on this face. We're do we're sorry, we're in the sketch now. So let's have at her. Uh, my tendency is to start with a rectangle, uh, always. Uh, we can see here, pull it out, but we've got some main dimensions already, 11 and a half by two. So let's go for the 11 and a half. So we'll dimension that, put it in about the same spot. We'll start jumping around a bit when it sizes. Now, I like to use the center line here as the, sorry, the bottom line of our original rectangle as a center line. That allows us to do some good work by just picking the top of this and calling it two. Nice. Now, again, you've got some options here. Um, the tendency is to draw rectangles. I, I'm not convinced. Let's not lock to the midpoint there. So you can see the midpoint. It is the correct spot, but let's do it manually. I'm going to actually map in this step manually. So first, we're after, just make sure this is good. Shouldn't be seeing any open ends here. So it's locked on properly. If we escape and just click that once, see it's coincident. Nice. So that's our beginning. So we've got a profile. And let's just do the other end. It's probably the same sort of shape. And again, just to make sure we've got no open ends. Looks good. And I'm immediately gonna try and build this up. So let's finish the sketch, do a revolve, pick the profile. There's only one center line. There we go. That's our body. So that was fast. Now all the fun is obviously in getting it right, the shapes of this thing. So we've got our general Shape down. We've went through essentially all the calculations that we did last week, figured out these. Uh, a lot of it's controlled by, for example, uh, where the hubs sit. So we're going to have some keyways in there, bearing spots, and ring grooves everywhere, right? So we want to have ring grooves because uh, we're assuming we're not quite sure what the load is here. Maybe we are. Sorry, I'm looking through the book here. We're going to assume that it's fairly well stressed. Um, so we're keen to get the stresses right uh, and make sure that like the part is able to deal with the, the loading. So we need ring grooves and rings at each bearing and at each hub. So we're going to be doing that. Let's get in here and start getting this profile set up. Now we have that sketch. So let's edit the sketch again. And just going to work our way through here. Uh, getting the dimensions down, we're going to start with first the Ds, which is normal, uh, with the distances. So we're going to work away from the end of the sketch, similar to how they have it measured up in the part uh, as shown. So let's have that, that. So from you can either go from the end or from the origin. It's up to you. End is, makes sense. And this guy right here is the overall 3.5. Uh, the distance to the end of this bearing here is one. Now this is all inch because we're an inch here. So after that, what we're going to be looking for is a distance for uh, ring grooves and all that sort of stuff. So for now, we're going to leave those lengths. So this is variable right now. Next up is the dimensioning. Um, I'm going to change, I'm going to put this down to what they have to begin with here. One, uh, this is going to change. Uh, they reference SKF in the solution. 
uh, as a bearing in here. So the bearing that I was able to find that matches up their recommendation is actually not available, at least in Canada. Uh, this one inch is strange. Uh, what we're gonna end up doing is changing this to 25 millimeters because bearings tend to be metric. However, at this side, the hub, this is an inch shaft. It's not unreasonable to believe that this would be a actual value. And they've got, again, a range in this in the drawing, but it's 1.6250. Let's show our diagram here, sorry. So this is what we're at here. Just drag things into place. So we've got this one, sorry, should have shown this at the start, 1.625 that out there to have a look nice now the 1.35 is going to be driven by the bearing and the minimum uh, sizes of this guy so i've went ahead here and looked up all the skf stuff so we have some bearings uh, so we'll be looking at this uh, as we go along to try and figure out what is going on in that spot so the hub looks like 1.5 inch but then there's just ring groove which we haven't gone to yet. So we'll leave that as is. So we've got a dimension here of one for now, 1.625 other side. Dimension again, this is a 1.825. Again, metric is coming, uh, 1.8. Got covering up this thing. 1.825, that's not right, 1.8. So this is gonna be a metric again. The other thing we've got here is this uh, hub under here, or over, or hub sitting on top and that's 1.65 looks similar so that's reasonable uh, so we have a choice here we can either leave that the other option here is actually just to make them collinear if you wish it's entirely up to you uh, keeps the dimensioning down uh, the the disadvantages if somebody's looking at this, they're missing this. And if you want to make the tolerance different, you can't uh, very easily anyway. So it's up to you. I'm going to stick with the dimension at each end after all that. Uh, we have a distance here. So from the end, which is easy to measure for a machinist, we've got one and three quarter inch. If I could click it with D turned on, sorry. One and three quarter inch. not a one and our hub here is about two but we're not exactly sure where that's going to be but we do know that to the end of the hub here is four so the right side hub is four let's have a look what we've got starting to get okay here uh, this will be getting quite messy uh, as we go along so always trying to keep things under control Got some undefined shapes here. Uh, these are positioning shoulders, the bearings, ring grooves, so on and so forth. Let's see if that breaks our revolve. Nope. Good. Now, what I'm going to do is immediately uh, try and figure out what's going on. If we look at our profile, we can ask to see dimensions if we wish. We can also start dragging things around a little bit. So this gives us an idea of what's shifted. You can see here at the back, same thing. We can move this around. Still, that's still flexible. Let's see here, let's have a look at the sketch. So 1.25, let's go ahead and edit that or put that in. So edit the sketch and dimension that guy. So we wanna position the bearing as fast as we can. There we go. So we've got the length of shoulders, everything else seems, so then we're down just to this 
retaining shoulder or positioning shoulder on both ends. We don't know where it is. We kind of vaguely know how big it should be. And we're going to use our bearing designation for that. So let's do that. Finish the sketch. I'm going to hide this for now. Um, I have already uploaded these files. The, let's see here, the dimension is the ring, the roller bearing goes on the right and the deep groove ball bearing goes on the left. Let's place the 305. Uh, if we wish, we can have a look at this. So we can just level, open it up. This is a separate file. There it is. This is directly from SKF. So this is the 305. Let's put it in order. So on the left, 305, there's our part. We have specs, sizes. We're gonna be looking at this here quite soon. Right now it's showing Imperial. D is not Imperial, it's 25. What about this guy? 30. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's go back to our part. So we can have a look at these things, but it's not important for us. What we want to do is just place it. Insert into current design. Keep an eye on the history here. So insert into current design. Just pop it in. Um, we can maneuver it around, but we're going to use a joint. Say OK. Then do the same for the roller. Yeah. And let's close the data panel. So let's go ahead and joint these guys. So this is going to be in our history, of course. So let's go back one step so I can joint this. Uh, bearings are, uh, seems obvious once you say it, but maybe until we say it, it's not. These are, can go on either way. So let's put it against our positioning shoulder. Again, it might get in the way so you can actually hide it. And then show it. Um, depend, you'll notice what, mm, it moves this when it's not shown. Let me cancel and do it again. So here we go one more time. J, sorry about that. It's easier to see if you can see what's going on. I can pick this top corner. There might be a fillet here eventually. Pick something that's not gonna go away, the top of the shoulder. Notice it just moves the inner thing. It'll move that all the rest of it later. It's not facing the right way. It's more like it. Say okay. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong here? Uh, it's not a joint thing. So let's go ahead here, edit this in place. So currently, if you hover over place parts, place assemblies, you can edit them. Uh, it's running now in, in edit in place. Let's go ahead here and make this a rigid group. Components, let's just pick everything because we haven't cho include child components. Say okay. Now if we pull this, it should shift all in one place. Now do it again. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. That's the first one done. So the 305 is down. Uh, again, we're going to have a quick look here at the end just to make sure we've got the right bearing. Let's pull the history out one step to the end. And we can hide the first one if it's getting in the way. Joint again. And then we realize, oh, hold on, it's going to do the same thing. So let's edit this in place. Under assembly, rigid group. Pick the whole top level because we have in child, include child components. Say, okay, finish the edit in place, do the joint. And this is at that edge, facing the right way. There we go. Perfect. So we've got our two bearings. Let's see what's going on here. Orlov, no, sorry, Orlov. Shigley describes these bearings. He doesn't actually say what the number is. He just gives us some uh, C value. C for the deep groove is 50-58 uh, pounds force. Let's go to Imperial for both. So 50-58 should be seeing some 
So there's a 5148, 5058, so that's fair. And the sizes are around what he asked for. OD around two and a half, he says two and a half even. So we're not getting that bearing because our ID, our bore diameter is not one. So this is a metric bearing. Width around three quarters of an inch uh, is what Shigley asked for, we're just below that. So it's not completely correct. And this is a, not a standardized basic bearing. It's it's standardized, it's got this strange number because of these filling grooves here, but it's not bad. It gives us more or less what we're after. What about the other one? Uh, he goes quite high for this one, uh, load wise, uh, and then decides that the deep grooves are gonna be way too big for this. So he switches over to roller uh, bearing, a C of 18.658. 18.659, so we're within a pound, so it's clearly the same one. Uh, ID's around just over one, so this is 30 millimeters. So he's got 1.181, we're at 1.181. Outside diameter, 2.8-ish, same. And width, 1.063, same. So this is the actual bearing he had in mind, NG2306. Uh, the ECML is kind of starts to get into exactly what SKF wants it to do. Uh, in the tech spec, you can see here that this is a sliding bearing or dismountable bearing. So they call it a separable design. So it only works one way. Um, normally we're gonna be trying to figure out what's going on here. Let's make sure we got the right stuff. Let's get, sorry. They want the shaft shoulder is to the high side of the bearing. Let's make sure we got that right. So here's the beginning of the fun. Let's do a uh, section analysis. And we can see here, we've got the bearing backwards. Nice. So let's fix that joint. So we've got this problem here. If we X out, which is we always pick the, it's hidden because of the analysis here. Uh, we usually want to pick the, well, we always want to pick the unconstrained first. So we picked over here, I believe the first time, let's go to the other side, the high shoulder. Make sure we get something on that flat face. It might be facing backwards now, there we go. So we now have the high, before we say, okay, we can see the right thing here. We've got the high point facing the shoulder. It's the same on both diagrams here. So that's our shaft shoulder there and there. And we definitely have that there. Perfect, let's say, okay. So now let's have a look at our analysis. Shaft is correctly arranged with the bearing. Nice. Uh, it doesn't make a massive change to our uh, final shaft uh, layout, but it does uh, have a have an effect on the bearing itself. So always follow the requirement, and we can see here again we're doing this correct. Nice. For the deep groove ball bearing, for the deep groove ball bearing, it's neutral side to side. So it doesn't matter here, but we can see this distance is wrong. Let's change that while we're at it. It's not one inch, it's 25 millimeters. Perfect. What about the other side? 1.183, now we know that's actually 30 millimeters. So we can type that in. So it looks the same, but if we look at this, we can see it's actually running on millimeters inside. Perfect. So next, let's try and figure out if the shoulders are fine. Now, SKF gives us shoulder sizes for, for example, the deep groove here, tech specs, DA minimum 1.26 1 1 by one and a quarter, just over one and a quarter is the minimum. So let's see what that looks like. Let's edit this sketch. 
and put a dimension on there like it just said 1.26 and then have a look at how that is that's the minimum size so you can't go below that what does uh, sometimes the canvas gets hidden by the analysis as well they've got 1.35 so that is kosher for SKF so 1.35 we're okay with that next now while we're at it why not give this the right length so kind of fill in good lord filling it in <laughs> can't get it because uh, i'm not in the sketch sorry hold on edit the sketch hello colin so just keep it on trucking here there we go getting that all sorted out that looks fine and we can see here that the shoulder is positioning the bearing nicely but not going anywhere near uh the the scary part of the bearing moving parts so this is completely fine looks good let's move it on to the other side here try our analysis so let's go and have a look at skf for the roller bearing what's our bare minimum looks like around depends on what side we're on uh we're on the back here so db doesn't really ever get there because it's a little chamfer but db would be our absolute max so they have a min here but it's 1.85 what do we have here so let's have a look at the sketch sorry let's have a look at the sketch and they are at here we can take a shortcut here one and a half That looks fine. Right, right in the middle of this of the taller end of the bearing race, inner race. So one and a half is fine for this bearing. As we would suspect, surely Shigley knows what's going on. So that all looks good. Now this is gonna be a little tight here. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. We have a ring groove coming on here. So let's go ahead here and do that next um it's maybe a good spot to stop here actually we've got our bearings on we've got our basic sizes set up uh next now uh, we're gonna go to the next video here uh and our ploy here is to try uh using things like rings and all the rest from mcmaster car to uh get the next part sorted out let's stop there for now i'll just put this into shape uh, i just press shift n to turn on the color so we can see what's going on and if we want we can hide the sketch so we're looking good here for the next video so that's it for this one moving on to the next one thanks for watching this one and we'll see you in a moment